Hello, in the previous video lecture, we tried to analyze the steady state performance uh, of a digital control system uh, when there is a, a disturbance a noise or disturbance uh, technically process disturbance acting on the system. We specifically analyzed a specific case where disturbance is a step input and what happens to the output at the steady state. And of course, uh, this is an unwanted difference, so we want the output to be equal to zero ideal or a very small with respect to this kind of input. Okay, today we will analyze a different uh, unwanted signal, which is called uh, measurement noise or measurement disturbance, which acts, uh, for example, at the uh, error signal, or it can be also acting at the uh, output measure. Okay, the basic idea is we are disturbing or uh, contaminating the input of our controller. Uh, in the previous case, we were contaminating the output of the controller. So it, the effect is of course, categorically different. So what's the idea? The idea is computing uh, the transfer function from omega to uh, the R first. Okay, so let's do it. So y of z, and of course, we assume that this is equal to zero, this is equal to zero, uh, equal to, okay, so this is omega z, okay. So what is this signal? Omega z minus y of z because we have a sample here okay times g c of z times g of z okay that's good so this is a discretized version of g okay that's good so from this we can easily see that y of z is equal to omega z that's equal to g of z times g c of z divided by one plus g c of z g of z Okay, so this is the uh, response uh, or transfer function from noise type of inputs or input to the output. Okay, that's good. So uh, we know that this is equal to g all of c, so we can write it in this form g all of l c, 1 plus g o l of z. Okay, so what we want is we want this to be very small, right? Okay, so we want the transfer function from input the noise input to the output to be as small as possible, possibly for all frequency rates. We may not achieve it, but this is our desire. This is what we want from the system. Okay, so since we don't have any control of plant, what we should do is, in order to achieve that, okay, so this, since this is one, as you can see, magnitude of, okay, G O L Z should be very, very small. Okay, so this implies that we should have a small gate open transfer function. Since we cannot affect the plant, what we should do is uh, we should have a very small gain controller in order to eliminate noise. Okay, so as you can see, this contradicts with our previous findings. In order to improve steady state error tracking performance and in order to be robust to disturbance input, we should implement a high gain controller but in order to eliminate noise type inputs, we should implement a low gain control. Okay, this is one of the most fundamental limitations and contradictions, uh, trade-offs in control systems uh, theory. Okay, so you cannot achieve both performances in terms of disturbance and noise or noise and uh, reference tracking performance at the same time. There's a limitation. So what you should do is you should analyze the frequency content of these disturbances carefully and try to adjust your gain or like a uh, transfer function at different frequencies such that overall you have a robust and good performance control. Okay, so if the content, frequency content of the disturbance and noise are uh, similar, then it means that you kind of fail and it is kind of a miserable situation that you need to overcome by designing your system first because a controller cannot solve it. You need to solve your design, for example, like decrease the friction increase your uh, sensor measurement uh, performance by uh, like uh, using uh, high performance equipment or something like that. Okay, now let's uh, analyze a specific case, okay? And let's assume that omega k is equal to, let's say, uh, omega, which is the weight, times u of k. Technically, weighted step inputs. Uh, so let, let's uh, analyze the R. Why steady state is equal to limit when z is going to 1, okay, so 1 minus z to power minus 1, r of z, not r of z, okay, this is wrong, this is omega of z, so, okay, there's some mistakes in the lecture notes, omega of z times g o l z, 1 plus g o l 
Z, okay. So uh, as you can see, the analyzing this is easier because everything on the depends on the open trust function. Okay, that's good. So if we simplify everything, y state state is equal to limit z is equal to one. Okay, omega, uh, not omega, it's a w g o z one plus g o l z. That's good. And we will analyze this from uh, different perspectives. Okay. So what we should do? Okay, that's good. That's easy. No problem. I think this is everything that we need. Okay, let's clean that. Okay, so uh, GOLZ or feed for trust of function is everything that we need for this type of analysis. Okay, so what could we uh, about the type of the system? Type of the system can be equal to zero. So which means that GOL when Z is going to one should be equal to constant. Okay, so in this case, Y steady state is simply equal to uh, omega times GOL one. Okay, that's good. I think that should be true. One plus G O L one. Okay, so it's constant technically. So if a G O L one is K D C, this is equal to omega times K D C one plus K D C. So it is constant. Okay. So what we can do is, as you can see, uh, in order to minimize this, we should pick K K D C as small as possible. If you increase K it doesn't matter. It will be equal to omega, right? So increasing k really is bad. It means that we just transfer the input directly to the output, which is, of course, bad. Okay? But a small gain is bad for other kind of uh, performance metrics, such as, for example, as you can see, let's say tracking error and disturbance rejection. Okay? So when it's a type n, n is greater than 0, y steady state is equal to, we are taking the limit, Okay, uh, when z is going to one, uh, type positive systems will go to infinity in terms of this. This will go to infinity, this will go to infinity, and it will be equal to omega. Okay, so it means that for type one systems, okay, so if your uh, noise is like DC noise, okay, so constant or step like noise, it means that it will be directly transferred to the output, which is terrible, if, especially if omega is large. Okay, so this is a limitation. So the best way of solving this is that make sure that your sensor doesn't have a DC bias. It's obvious because if your sensor has a bias, of course, it should be directly affect the output. Make sure that there is no DC bias or low frequency, low frequency error in your sensors. In general, it's okay to have some high frequency noises, which can be filtered by the controller and the system, but it kind of implies that having a DC noise at the measurement is terrible for your control system. Especially, it limits you to uh, perform better in other metrics. Okay, let's solve a very simple example and finish the uh, lecture. Okay, so let's assume that G of C is equal to z over z minus 0.5, gc of z is equal to k. Okay, so as you can see, this is a type 1 system, this is a type 1 system. So g o l z is equal to k, z over z minus 0.5, this is type 0, y steady state is equal to g o l 1, 1 plus g o l 1, it is equal to 2k, 1 plus 2k, it's constant, it depends on k. So as k is decreases, y steady state decreases. Okay, so y steady state, sorry, my right. Okay. So analysis of this, of course, is much easier than analysis of uh, this disturbs input because this only depends on g all of c. But uh, the good thing is these two examples, okay, so two different kind of unwanted signals has different effects on your system. And if you eliminate one of them, the other time will technically increase, which is bad. There's a like watershed effect. Okay, so it kind of says that uh, when designing control systems, it's just not designing your controller. It's analyzing your plant, your system, your measurement, and everything. Okay, so control engines should also be part of the design process.